Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now I don't really get much time to do portable radio ops, but if I did, then this antenna would be towards the top of my list to take along. Now this is the JNC Radio MC599 shortwave dipole antenna, and it covers from 40 meters right up to 6 meters. That's 7 megahertz up to 50 megahertz. Now showcasing or reviewing an antenna on YouTube has its difficulties because even though I could show you a one-to-one -one SWR across all the bands, that doesn't mean it would actually work well for transmitting or receiving. However, I have done some tests later in the video that I think are pretty fair to show the antenna's performance. Now this antenna does come in a nice little zipped material carry case. It even has a leatherette handle if that's your kind of thing. Now from the intro video, you would have noticed that the two main dipole elements are in fact telescopic whips, but they do hold a secret that I've not seen before on other telescopic whips. Now more on that in a moment. To achieve 40 meters or seven megahertz, there's two quality lengths of pre-cut wire included, and they are terminated at one end with a ringlet, and the other end has some stretchy material, which is used for guying it out. The main centerpiece of the dipole is this piece, and it feels extremely solid. Definitely no skimping on the quality of production here. On the left and right shoulders, you'll find the socket in which the telescopic whips screw into. And on the right side, you also find an SO239 socket, which of course is where you attach your coax, which goes off to your radio or amplifier. Now my kit didn't come with any coax. However, making your own or buying a pre-made patch cable can be relatively cheap, especially when using HF frequencies. On the bottom of this rather solid and heavy dipole center, you'll find the insert, which is used to mount the antenna onto a mast. Now there is a dedicated optional extra telescopic mast available for this antenna and I'll take a look at that when we head outside in a bit. Now the telescopic whips have something special on them and because this antenna is multi-band by adjusting the length of each element, JNC Radio have had these manufactured with a little stop marker for each band. Now this makes changing bands super quick because each band marker well, it's already there. Now you may be wondering how accurate these markers are. Well, later in the video, I'll go through each band and show you the results on my antenna analyzer. But when using one of the bands from 20 meters up to six meters or 14 megahertz up to 50 megahertz, you need to install the whips like this. If using 40 meters, then you need to install the wires. Now you could install the wires like this, using the telescopic poles fully retracted to hold the wires in place. But you can also purchase a set of M10 bolts designed for these wires. They have little indents, so tighten them up with your fingers and thumbs. Well, it's super easy. No real need to use an Allen key if you don't need to. The kit that I ordered included a long length of guy rope and these pegs, which are made from steel. If you're into your camping gear, then you'll notice that these pegs are actually pretty good quality. And these little side hooks really help keep the guy wires quite tall. So outside now, and for demonstration purposes, I will set this antenna up in my garden and let you imagine that we're out at a park or some kind of summit. However, I would highly doubt you'd take this telescopic mast up a summit as it's pretty hefty. Now what's interesting about this mask is that each section, of which there are five of them, they are air dampened, meaning the antenna collapses slowly. And the mast weighs just under nine kilograms and extends to a total height of just under five meters, or 16 feet for those that measure, I mean feet. The guy line rope comes in a hundred meter length and that allows you obviously to cut to your desired lengths. That's made from polyester and has a breaking strength of 227 kilograms or 500 pounds. Now each section has a thumb style screw to hold it in place once pulled out. And as I pull out each section, I can feel a slight bit of resistance 
and you can kind of hear it sucking in air. Now so that I can mount the dipole center, I'll just need to remove this top section off the top of the mast. Now the legs, which spread out, have a tightening clamp at the top and the bottom. So once deployed, there's little chance of it collapsing. Now I guess you could install it like this, but personally I feel it much safer and provides a more stable installation if the center pole is actually touching the ground like this. Attaching that dipole center is as simple as dropping it into the top and then just tightening up the thumb screw. Now at this point, I may as well attach my coax, which will go off to my shack. Now, as mentioned earlier, each band has its own stop marker on each of the elements. And for this first test, we'll choose the 20 meter band, which is at 14 megahertz. Now you do the same for the other element as well, and then screw them into the dipole center. Now you could at this point attach the guy ropes. However, I wanted to test the SWR first. Now luckily it's not very windy today and we actually have the sun out here in the UK, which is actually a rarity these days. Now you're not going to be able to see the screen on my network analyzer due to the reflection from the camera. So I took a screenshot and these are the results. Now remember that the only length I adjusted the elements to was the stop marker for 20 meters. And here we can see a pretty flat SWR across the whole of the 20 meter band, starting at 14 megahertz up to the top band edge of 14.35 megahertz. Now that SWR line is below 1.5 across the entire band. Now before heading inside, I did decide to attach some guy ropes and that's because I wanted to leave this set up on the 20 meter band overnight. And without putting my trust in the British weather, I wanted to ensure it was still erected when I woke up in the morning. And yes, I do mean the antenna. Now back in the shack, an easiest way to show you the results is by using an SDR receiver. And my main antenna for HF is actually a wire antenna with a remote tuner. So with it tuned to 20 meters and connected to port A of my RSPDXR2 and the dipole connected to port C, we can clearly see a lower noise floor and slightly higher signal level with the dipole antenna. Now the horizontal section of my remotely tuned wire is around five meters higher than the dipole as well. Uh, my name is Elias, uh, Alpha Lima Juliet, Alpha Zulu. Uh, thank you for this contact uh, and good luck with your QRP, man. Um, 73 from my end, uh, best of luck to you, bye bye. Now you would have noticed that some stations could not even be heard on the wire antenna, but with a dipole just five meters off the ground, it was outperforming the wire antenna. You probably would have noticed that 20 meter band conditions were pretty dire as well at the time of recording this video, and it would have been quite easy for me to pick up the mic and make a contact, but that would not have shown you how well this antenna was working. So I decided to run Whisper or WSPR for a few hours with a power level of only five watts coming from my ICOM 7100. And here are the results. We have a huge cluster of stations that received my WSPR signal around Western Europe, but there are a few stations receiving me right down in Australia, Antarctica, Brazil, and the east and west coasts of the USA. There are even a couple of reports from the Arctic Circle up on Svalbard. In case you're wondering, the antenna was pointing north to south with the broadside east to west. Now I didn't get any time to try it, but I did wonder how my signal would have been affected if I'd rotated the antenna. Now maybe I'll try that in another video. Now as mentioned earlier, dropping the antenna down can be performed super safely because each section is air dampened. So there's no sudden collapse when loosening those thumb screws which hold each section in. So now it's time to test the SWR on each of the bands. Remember, we'll just use the band stop markers that are printed on the telescopic whips. We have to adjust both whips as it's a dipole. Both elements need to be the same length. So first we'll test the 17 meter band at 18 megahertz. So once adjusted, we can now take a look at the antenna analyzer. Now, incidentally, if you're interested in this vector network analyzer and take a look at one of my recent videos where I actually done a review on this exact model. 
The span set on the VNA was from 18 MHz to 18.5 MHz, but in reality the 17 meter band is from 18.068 to 18.168 MHz. And for that span, the antenna achieves an SWR of 1.5 or less across the entire band. So back to the antenna to bring it down again, which is super simple as you saw a moment ago, and now we'll adjust the lengths of the elements to the 15 meter marker, which is labeled as 21 megahertz. Now erecting the mast again is also super quick as you saw earlier, just remember to push up all the sections. Back on the VNA with a span set from 21 megahertz to 22 megahertz, but in reality, we only need to look at 21 to 21.45 MHz. We can see an SWR again of 1.5 or less across the entire 15 meter band. Right, back to the antenna again and time to bring it down. Loosening these thumb screws and letting each section come down of its own accord is actually quite satisfying. Now, having these sections dampened really does help and it does save you having an accident. By the way, I don't think I mentioned this, but this tripod mast is only around $50, so it was well worth the purchase, as I'm sure I'll probably use it for other antennas in the future as well. Now I'll reduce the length of the whips to the 12 meter marker, and then just raise the antenna again like before. Over on the VNA with a span set from 24 to 26 megahertz, while well, actually only needing 24.89 to 24.99 megahertz, we can see that SWR lowest dip is around 25 megahertz, but the portion of the band we need is still around 1.6 or lower. Now, if I was going to operate this band with this antenna, I would change the span on the VNA and then lengthen the element slightly just so that the center dip drops a few kilohertz. Okay, so back to the antenna yet again to take it down and then adjust the elements for the 10 meter band which actually spans from 28 megahertz right up to 29.7 megahertz. So seeing the dip in the center here is pretty expected. Of course, if you wanted to use this antenna on 10 meters for the SSB portion, then I would lengthen the element slightly to just drop that resonant point. For the FM portion of the 10 meter band, then it's still usable and below 1.8. Again here, I might shorten the element slightly if I wanted to get picky. Now, what was quite strange was at the time of recording this video, there were only distant sounding SSB stations on the 10 meter band. But after running Whisper for a few hours with only five watts, my Whisper transmissions were being picked up in South America, Antarctica, Northern Australia, just off the coast of Madagascar, a few inter G stations, and then a shed load of Western Europe stations. So it appears to be working okay on 10 meters. Now at this point, I wanted to test out the 40 meter dipole wires, and I did make an effort to install this in my garden. However, my garden is just not long enough and attempting to install the wires, not how they were designed. Now that resulted in the SWR being too high. Well, the resonant point was just above the 40 meter band and I didn't really want to start cutting or adding wire onto what was provided, especially if I'm not installing it, how it's been recommended. So I think I will have to find a local park to test out the 40 meter elements at a later date. I do apologize about not being able to show you that in this video. Now the telescopic whips do not have any markings for the six meter band, i.e. 50 megahertz, but tuning the dipole to six meters wasn't too much of an issue. Just kind of need to collapse both of the elements down and then pull them out a couple of sections and you'll be in the ballpark figure. So if we take a look at this SWR plot, we can see that we have a rather nice result from 50 megahertz up to 52 megahertz with an SWR of below 1.5 across the entire band. Now the magic band was not really open, but after putting out a few CQ calls using FT8, PSK reporter website showed me where my FT8 CQ calls were being heard. Now there's lots around the southern parts of the UK and the Midlands, and there's one down in Spain, and then there's a few over towards Italy and Bulgaria. So again, it does prove to be working to some degree. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is the JNC Radio MC599 dipole portable antenna. Now let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. But if I was a portable ops kind of guy, 
then I think that this would be one of the antennas in my arsenals just for the pure fact that it's really easy to set up. Now, I was a bit disappointed I wasn't able to test out 40 meters due to the fact that my garden wasn't long enough to pull out the element, but hopefully I'll test it in the near future at a local park. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.